Hi everybody, welcome back to our kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. In today's video, we are going to make sourdough bread with iron corn flour. So let's get started. Iron corn flour behaves much differently than modern wheat. So throughout this tutorial, I'm gonna give you some tips and techniques that you can use to handle this dough more easily. Now, the first thing that we need to do is feed our sourdough starter. I like to do this the night before, and I feed my starter a, a small ratio of starter to flour and water. That way it has a nice slow rise overnight. So to a clean jar, um, I've added 25 grams of starter. You can use any starter that you have that's wheat to make this einkorn bread with. So if you have a wheat starter, just put 25 grams of that into a jar along with 100 grams of water and 100 grams of einkorn flour. Cover it and let that sit overnight. Our starter is nice and bubbly. So let's go ahead and get started on mixing the dough. I always like to add the water to the bowl first. And with this recipe, I'm going to add 300 grams of water. If you go to my website, you will see the conversion from grams to cups. And I put just a little bit too much in there, so I'm gonna remove it. Okay, next I'm gonna add the starter. So with einkorn, you need a lot more starter than in our other recipes. So I'm gonna put 200 grams of starter that I fed last night before I went to bed. And again, I like to get the, the starter in the water in the bowl first. I feel like that just kind of helps to evenly distribute the starter throughout the dough. I want you to notice that I'm also using a round, clear bowl for this. Einkorn flour is much stickier than regular flour, and this uh, shape of bowl is gonna help us to turn the dough out later whenever we have to start shaping it. Okay, so now I'm going to add 10 grams of salt, and this is a pink Himalayan salt, which is what I prefer to use. Give that another little stir. And now we're gonna add the flour. So I'm going to add four and a half cups of flour, which is 540 grams. This is all purpose einkorn flour. You can find this in some grocery stores. A lot of times you might have to order it online And I can put a link down below where I get my flour. I like to buy it in bulk since I do use a lot of it. I have to test a lot of recipes. So it ends up being a little bit less expensive if you buy it in bulk. Okay, so that is 540 grams of einkorn flour. Now let me move that to the side and I'm gonna grab my dough hook. Okay, you can use this offset spatula if you want to. And actually, I'm gonna use it just to get this started. You have to remember that if you've never worked with einkorn flour before, it just, it's a whole different ball game versus regular wheat flour. It's much, much stickier to work with. Gotten this started. And actually, I'm just gonna continue using this offset spatula, but you can use um, this dough hook spatula if you, if you don't have an offset spatula. So you just want to Give this a good mix. You will see some 
dry bits in the dough and kind of stuck to the side, that's okay. You want it to kind of look like this. We're gonna cover the bowl and I just have like a little silicone bowl cover and we're gonna let this rest for one hour. The dough has been sitting for an hour and it has started to really absorb all that flour. And when you're working with einkorn, you have to use more flour than you would with regular uh, wheat flour. This is something you'll just have to kind of get used to. Um, I have a bench scraper that I'm going to use to get the dough out of the bowl. So I'm just taking it and loosening up the sides. And then I'm going to dump this out. Let's go ahead and turn this around so you can see right onto the flour. Einkorn has a much weaker gluten in it than regular flour. So it's not going to be as stretchy and you can see it's just, it's really sticky. Just takes a little bit of getting used to. Now I'm going to keep this right here because I'm going to have to use this to help lift up this dough. But right now we're going to fold the dough and I'm going to keep putting some flour down to help it prevent it from sticking. My hands and the table. Okay, we're gonna do uh, some folds. So I'm gonna pull this up, not too much because it's gonna break. You'll see it starting to break on the sides. Take the other side, fold it over. Just add some flour if it starts sticking to your hands. I'm gently stretching it forward and over. And I'm going to do the same thing on that side. I'm going to put this back in the bowl and cover it and let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's been 15 minutes and we are going to fold this dough one more time. So again, I'm generously flouring my work surface and I'm going to take this and again, just kind of loosen this dough from the sides before I turn it out. I just want to show you how I am not struggling, but just working this dough out. If you've never worked with it. It's again, it's a little challenging, but um, totally doable. Okay, so again, I'm going to make sure that I have some flour on my hands and the work surface. I'm just shaping this into kind of a square rectangular type of shape. And again, just going to fold the sides. And you can see I'm kind of, let me get this in the camera, I'm kind of pulling on it and just bringing it over. And I can feel the dough kind of sticking to the counter. So now I am going to put this into a clean bowl and I'm gonna let it rise in this bowl. This bowl is just a little bit smaller than the one that I mixed it in, okay? Um, and I want this dough to rise for a couple of hours 
in my kitchen I usually let it rise for about three hours I'm gonna cover it up and I want it to rise about 20 to 30 percent so in this smaller bowl I can see how much it rises a little bit easier so I'm just gonna cover it with this little silicone cover and set it aside for three hours this dough has been rising for three hours since we uh, last gave it you know gave it the last fold so I am going to turn it out onto the work surface before I do that I'm going to uh, flour my banneton this dough will stick if you do not flour the banneton very very well so I'm generously flouring this okay so that's what it looks like also I'm going to flour the surface that I'm working on and I'm going to turn this dough out first I'm just going to use my little scraper to kind of help pull it away the dough away from the bowl and that way it'll come out a little bit easier okay but you want to turn it out gently onto the floured surface and just take your time and work it right out of the bowl Okay, so we don't want to put any flour on the top of this. So just put the flour around the sides and use your bench scraper to kind of shove it underneath a little bit so that way it doesn't stick. And we're going to shape the dough. We're going to do it very, very gently. Just pull and bring it to the center and go all the way around until you have everything pulled to the center of the dough. Okay, once you get it all to the center, flip the dough over and you're gonna use your hands to cup it and turn it. If your hands start to stick to the dough, just grab a little flour and use that to keep it from sticking. You want to give the dough several turns till it starts to feel like it's getting kind of tight. Okay. Now I'm going to Put some more flour on the outside of the dough. Use your bench scraper to help lift it up and put it into the banneton with the seam side up. So you can see how um, high the dough is in this banneton right now. What we're going to do is I'm going to cover this up and we are going to let this rise at room temperature for one and a half hours total before it goes into the oven. But in about 30 minutes, I'm going to put the Dutch oven into the oven to start preheating. So that will give it another hour for the Dutch oven to preheat. And then this should be risen, you know, almost to the top, maybe not quite, but it should uh, rise you know, an inch or so. So we'll check on it. Um, I'll come back in 30 minutes to show you what it looks like whenever I go to put the Dutch oven into the oven. Okay, this dough has been resting for about 30 minutes and now it is time to get our Dutch oven into the oven and get the oven preheated. So I'm gonna put my oven on 500 degrees and we're gonna let it preheat for one hour while the dough continues to rise. All right, you guys, this 
has been rising and it's actually gotten to the top of the bowl so it's kind of kind of stuck a little bit there but that's okay no worries at all all right so i'm going to get the dutch oven out get it ready it's piping hot I use parchment paper, so I'm going to put that on top of the dough, turn that over, and then I'm going to gently, very, very gently, just kind of wiggle the banneton to let the dough detach. And look how gorgeous this is. You can knock some of this uh, flour if you, if you want. I don't want to because I want that on there. I can knock that off later. Now we're going to score this, but you do not want to score this very deep because the gluten structure is, structure is very weak. So we just want it enough to where it's going to rise. So we just do it on the top. So I'm just going to make a little square. And you can see I've got this set to where it's not very deep. It's a little over a quarter of an inch maybe. That's it. So I'm going to use my parchment paper like a sling. I'm going to cover that up. And we're going to bake this covered pretty much the entire time. I am going to turn the oven down to 450 and I'm going to put a timer on for 40 minutes and we'll be back after 40 minutes well, look at this how gorgeous is this really nice rise um, so I'm going to go ahead let me get my trivet so I can transfer this onto the cooling rack. And I just use this parchment paper. You gotta be very careful. Don't burn your hands, but I just use that to lift it up. And you wanna take the, the parchment paper out. Let me go ahead and move this. It's very, very hot. And look, oh, this is just gorgeous. Look how beautiful this is. Absolutely gorgeous. Let this cool for two hours before you slice it. This einkorn sourdough bread has had a chance to cool. So let's go ahead and cut it open. There you go. It, um, the iron corn flour is going to produce these smaller crumbs that you see here. You're not gonna get those big holes like you would in regular sourdough because the iron corn just has a much weaker gluten uh, structure, but this is perfect. You guys, this spread is so delicious and it is great for sandwiches, avocado toast, uh, we love to dip it into uh, soups and, you know, just break off a piece and, and just eat it. It's delicious. Now, this bread will stay good at room temperature for up to two days. You can either put it in a bread bag or um, what I like to do is I have like a little cutting board and I use a cake stand glass cake sand topper and I just cover the bread and leave it on my counter like that. Uh, after two days you're going to want to slice this up and stick it in the freezer in a freezer safe bag and that way you can just pull a piece out at a time as you want to enjoy your sourdough bread. So that is it. That's how easy it is to make this bread. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will leave a link in the description box below where you can print out the recipe and 
until the next video. Bye.